All right. Um, that dovetails very well with our next lightning talk. Um, so Whitney Kilgore, the uh, Chief Academic Officer of iDesign, um, is going to talk about their commitment um, to uh, research over swag. I don't know about you, but I have pretty much insulated my attic with cons uh, conference t-shirts and bags. Um, and the volume of stuff that I've left in my conference hotel rooms is about double that. Um, and I think what you'll hear from Whitney um, builds very nicely on what you just heard from Emily. Ladies and gentlemen, Whitney Kilgore. Um, wow, I almost need a microscope to see that. Okay, there we go. Wait for it. Okay. <laughs> Um, so thank you, Michael, for inviting us to, to talk about this topic. It was last year at the Empirical Educator Project out at Stanford when this concept started to really percolate. Um, we became really aware of the opportunities that existed to collaborate with some of our university partners. And truthfully, it was right before the OLC conference last spring when I took to Twitter and said, what's the best swag you ever received at a conference? And everyone flooded in with, oh, this little bank, and oh, this power bank, and oh, this t-shirt. And, and it became this flood of ideas. And people had held on to things for years and years and had them on their desk. Lots of photos were shared. And suddenly, I think it was Christian Eshelman from Davidson College who said, why do companies do this? Why do they hand out things that I typically throw away in my hotel trash can before I have to get on an airplane instead of investing in what's really important, which is scholarship? And it was in that moment that we decided, so if you ever see us at a conference, we will have nothing. <laughs> But we support scholarship. So I design as a company. We're about six years old. We work with a lot of great people. But what I'm here to talk about is the things that we value, right? And that's our partnerships, our research, collaboration with our partners. We believe in these educational spaces that are rich and robust so that the students have the best possible experience. And we get to that point by supporting faculty through really hands-on, high-touch, we call it white glove concierge support for faculty through this design of online courses and programs. And we think learning can be transformational. This notion of scholarship rather than swag, allows our relationships with our partners to be more transformational as well. So I'll fast forward from that OLC conference to a South by Southwest, where our CEO, Paxton Ryder, heard Michael Sorrell give the keynote address. And after that, he picked up the phone, he called Michael Sorrell, and he said, I understand you're licensing courses from the University of Phoenix. We'd like to make sure you don't have to do that anymore. We want to eliminate cost for you. We'll build courses for you for free. So in our work with Paul Quinn College, we're actually helping them teach their students without the cost of that licensing fee. Um, one of the other things that seemed to be pretty straightforward and simple for us to do, to execute on, um, was to grant scholarships to some of our partner institutions. So last December, we announced that we were doing the iDesign Innovation and Learning Leadership Award. We had applicants submit their presentations, their uh, collected works, what they wanted to research and publish. And so we supported two scholarships for individuals to continue research and present in their field. Debbie Good is here at the University of Pittsburgh in the Katz School of Business. Uh, Jessica Sumter is at Waynesburg University, which is actually really close here too. So ironically, here we are in the center of where our scholarship was happening. And as we go forward, we've struggled with this quandary of context that Michael touched upon earlier. How do you create something and share something that's relevant to so many people? And with that, I want to introduce Krista Gallion, our Vice President of Learner Experience Design, to tell you a little bit about what we're announcing today. All right. So as, as Whitney talked about before, is that we want to be transformational. So, uh, you know, we have lots of learning architects working with great faculty, and at the end of the day, 
what we do and what you do with your learning design teams and working with faculty should not be transactional. It should be transformational, just like education should be, right? Education is an intervention that should, at the end of the day, change the student for the better, change them towards the goals. And one of our goals is to make sure that when we work with faculty in building a course, that that experience should actually change for the better. Hopefully we change to become better because we learn more with each of our partners and hopefully faculty change and that they learn about learning theory, course design, and not just their subject matter expertise. So um, one of the things that uh, we're focusing on is the removing of that barrier. So, um, so when we're working with faculty and being able to try to convey certain key core ideas um, that's the idea book, which is full of uh, core links to how do you write learning objectives? What is good learning design? Um, what are some ideas for activities? So essentially think of the book as a form of distributed cognition, right? Where you talk to the faculty about an idea, but then the idea dissipates. Well, how do you remove that barrier? You create a book that serves as a, a source of the ideas. Your learning architect can talk to the faculty about these ideas, and then there's a resource that's easy to read, easy to use, simple, visually pleasing, that you can go back to. So essentially, the idea is a tool to help in that transformational process of faculty being able to design and deliver good quality courses. So this is actually available, open, and free for, for people to use as you see fit. And we're really open and um, happy to talk to you about the ways that we've used it in developing several programs already and looking forward to, to having it grow um, as we talk with you about it. Yeah, excellent. Um, okay, so one little teaser, because maybe there's something else you want to talk to us about, is we are also exploring how we can reach another audience and create career pathways. So this summer, we'll be announcing our LX Pathways project where anyone can become an instructional technologist. Anyone can become a learning architect. We'll create these open pathways for folks to come and learn and explore in a competency-based format. And then there'll be portfolio reviews and mentoring um, straight from iDesign. So if you're interested in learning more about what that looks like, please come feel free to chat with us. Thank you very much, Michael.